Hello and welcome to MM Design or mm -hmm, Design. My name is Maria and I love fashion, love talking about it, love researching about it. If you feel the same, then I encourage you to subscribe and just join our fashion fandom group. Today, I'm going to be talking about the history of platform shoes. Lately, you know, they're coming back because of the 2YK, the 90s trends, Spice Girls, you know, they're coming back. There's lots of platforms on the runways. We see them all over the fashion week. So I've decided to do a little research, figure out where it started, when it started. <clears throat> Hi there. It's me, the sponsor, Maria. Today, I am happy to announce that this video is being sponsored by Sapsana. What is Sapsana, you might ask? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Sapsana is a platform for many different jewelry designers, well, particularly from Russia, to present you with their masterpieces and they're all made out of quality materials whether it be silver or gold or maybe a little mix of the two with quality genuine stones and let me tell you if you're picky about your jewelry that site has everything that you need in it so i'm just gonna take you through my favorite section of the site and it's the trend you can either go by clicking here or go into the menu into the ideas and here are many different ideas like maybe something of silver or gold or with a stone or without a stone and you can see here there is trends so you click on that and look at these designs these are super slick super modern very clean nothing crazy i love everything that has a chain in it <laughs> i already have a large ring and by the way the jewelry i'm wearing in this video is also from sapsana so right now i have a little set from them all in silver and some asymmetric earrings a ring that kind of matches that texture of the of the earrings and also this nice and like super classy slash modern chain i love it love it as i got the silver set i'm like oh my goodness this quality can't be beat and now i'm always wearing it and now i'm so happy that i have something new to wear <laughs> and now i'll have to make choices tough tough choices and this jewelry i'm wearing is from the designer if more and it came in such a cute little packaging and i just love it if it, you're shopping as a gift this would be so perfect for my viewers only, there's going to be a little discount code down below for you to use on your purchase. And I am so glad to be partnered with this brand. I, I yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and just, yeah, okay, let's get started. <laughs> the history of platforms can be dated back almost to 600 BCE. So that's, that's not like even our era <laughs> the greeks were the ones to use these platform shoes in order to elevate themselves whether it was for some kind of a play to make actors taller or shorter well you know like the other way around so somebody would be too like taller but the other one would not have shoes on so they'll be shorter anyways or they were used to show off status for instance women would wear really high ones if they wanted to show off that they're super wealthy and that would also contribute to the length of their garments so the longer the dress was the richer the woman is and because they were wearing platforms they were able to wear those long garments and not ruin them on the streets so let's just go to a completely different area and we see platforms in japan in ancient japan and these platforms were actually used in order not to sink into mud fields when they were worn in the rice and patties in Heian period in Japan, which lasted until the 1100s, men would strap on gatas, or what they were actually a flat board with two additional boards attached to them, making them a little bit higher, effectively wooden stilts. 
Eventually, with time, they became higher and higher, and that became a perfect accessory for any woman to walk around in their beautiful kimonos without ruining the lower hem. Both men and women wore these shoes for many, many years, and some actually even wear them today. But eventually in Japan, they did take a little bit more of a scandalous turn, where geishas started wearing these platform shoes during their performances. Oirens, quote-unquote, the higher-leveled prostitutes, would actually take that idea of attracting male gaze to them by having those shoes, but elevating them to like ridiculous heights in order to show what kind of, you know, what they're trying to get to, a little bit of a seduction there. Their getas were gigantic, some actually going up to as 25 centimeters. That's like, mm, maybe like 12 inches here, yeah, maybe? With the higher wealth as well as with the woman of the night, which is a little bit confusing. Like, why do they want to be the same? Anyways, platforms are taking us into the medieval times, you guys. So, by the medieval era, platforms were used to avoid something very nasty. What nastiness might you ask? It's of the human and animal variety. We all do it, even the princesses, you guys. And it's poop and pee and etc. All right, so because there was no sewer systems, there was throw your stuff outside the window kind of a situation, many roads were basically not roads. There were just a mud bath with all of the different garbage and sewage stuff. I imagine why nobody wanted to get their shoes dirty, so they used platforms in order to protect their shoes. So instead of having like a shoe with a platform, they just had these blocks that they would attach to their shoe and walk above it all and then take them off when they enter the house. In the 1300s, people in the Middle East would wear what were called cab cabs, which were flat soles that basically had two slits attached to the bottom to elevate a person's foot safely above water and hot surfaces. Over in the Western Europe and England, people would wear what's known as a patten. These patterns were effectively platforms made of wood or metal that could be strapped onto women's or men's shoes to give them stilt effect while walking outside. People lived in these conditions for hundreds of years. By the 16th century, these have elevated into the status symbol. From 1500s to 1800s, patents became something a little bit different. Instead of having them being attached to a shoe, there were actually a shoe itself with a very, very thick sole. And they started calling themselves, well, they didn't call themselves, somebody called them, Chopine. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Now it became more of a fashion statement rather than a necessity to keep your clothes feces-less. And once again, the ladies of the night took up that <laughs> and showed their status or wealth by having those platforms, the bigger, I guess, the more expensive they were, or like more pristine, I don't know. And there was even rumors that Napoleon was a big fan of those, and it was rumored that he was wearing chopinas that were almost 30 inches tall. Oh my goodness. And over in England, William Shakespeare used platforms just like the Greeks did to make his actors taller, and so people in the back rows could actually see them. If you'd like to support me in making more of these videos, all you need to do is maybe give this video a like, maybe write a little nice comment down below, and if you're not already subscribed, then it would help me so much. Thank you. By the 1930s and 40s, platforms were part of the sex appeal wardrobe. This gave the illusion of wonderfully long legs. 
as opposed to high heels, platforms gave a little bit more comfort while wearing these, but not losing out on the height part. In the 1930s, Italian shoe designer Salvatore Ferragamo realized this and, and resurrected the platform, bringing them back after decades of being ignored by fashion crowds. And because there was a little bit of, you know, financial crisis back then, almost like it is right now, <laughs> he discovered that using cork as a material to get that platform was very cost effective. Nowadays, we have fake cork. Or like a platform and then it has like a thin layer of cork mm -hmm. so is it even worse nowadays <laughs> by the 1970s the disco era found platform shoes irresistible it didn't matter if you were a guy or a lady you could be rocking some heels or platform heels no questions asked rock and roll also was part of this movement you guys and of course, the 90s, the Spice Girls. Yes, do I need to say more? Girl power, feminism, and of course, the goth movement also, also are very particular about their, their platforms. Yes. So we did see a return of platform somewhere in the 2010 with the Balenciaga croc. What is this? This is their working together, but more like a crocodile. Baby shark to do it, it did it, baby shark to do it, it did it, baby shark to do it, it did it, baby shark. Anyways, and today we see the return of platforms. So many platforms. Yes. Okay, is it a surprise? I don't think so. It kind of like if we're thinking about the 90s, the 2YK, it makes sense for the platforms to be returning us today. I'm not always the biggest fan of platforms just because I'm always afraid of twisting my ankle, but I do like how they look on other people. <laughs> it's just depending on the situation. Like if you need to walk on a super flat surface, yes. If it's a little bit rocky, then maybe decide to wear something not as fancy as a platform. And I do prefer to have like some movement in my foot when I walk too. So it gets a little bit difficult just to like step like like a little duck. With a history as long as the platform shoes, you'd think we'd be tired of it by now. But no, fashion is very cyclical. If you haven't lived in the era where it was popular, you'd probably want to try it out. And this is what's happening today. Lots of teens are like, oh my gosh, I've never worn platforms. Let me get the platform shoes, right? Yeah. And some of the people who lived actually in that era, like, uh, been there, done that, it's okay, not for me, or maybe it's like, oh my gosh, this is my youth, I need to try it again. Everybody feels differently about everything, and don't be judging people for what they like and don't like. It's up to them, okay? It's their comfort level. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know I have. I love digging back to the history, finding out why something was created for what purpose and how it manifested in today's world. So again, thank you to our sponsor, Subsana. You can find their link down below. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. We have much more videos like this and a lot of actual fashion trends, what's happening in the world today. Um, once again, my name is Maria and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay classy. Bye. Just like the Gre the Greeks, the Greeks, the Greeks, huh? The Gr the Greeks did.